Hey, welcome back to the Guillemot Kayaks Workshop. I'm Nick Shada, and in this episode, we will be cleaning the inside of the Petrol Sea Kayak and working on the combing lip. I know it's been a long time since I posted a video. It was back in the spring, and now it's almost Christmas. Um, but I've been really busy doing a lot of different things, a lot of tasks to maintain the business that I that needed to be done but you know when in a normal year when there's all sorts of things on the schedule it's just sort of hard to fit in I was able to get to a lot of projects um, that had been neglected for a while and some interesting things you may know that last year I upgraded my website um, that was a big project one thing that project did was made a platform to uh, show off my plans and I thought there's other really good plans out there by some really talented designers and I put all this effort into my website to make a system for showing off plans let's see if I can get some of those other plans onto my website and uh, make them available to people that might not know about them uh, it's not that they were, these were necessarily um, hard to find plans. They were plans I thought were really special and designers that I thought really had something to offer. And I thought I had a platform with my website to get them exposed to more people. One of them is Ted Moore's and Bear Mountain Boats. A lot of uh, strip builders know about Ted from his books, uh, Canoe Craft and Kayak Craft. Uh, Canoe Craft is really been kind of the Bible for strip building for a very long time um, and Ted Moores is sort of the godfather of a lot of us strip builders by writing that book he made it accessible to a lot of people and he really sort of set the tone for sort of fine strip plank boats I've really been honored to be in contact with Ted and his wife Joan Barrett they've agreed to let me start uh, marketing some of their plans a lot of these plans were uh, traditional designs from uh, manufacturers that are no longer making these boats and others are designs that Ted Moore commissioned um, from Steve Killing, uh, a renowned naval architect, to create some brand new designs. They're not new anymore, but uh, they're, they're really quality designs. Designs from, for example, Chestnut, which was a Canadian New Brunswick um, canoe builder for a very long time. Uh, so their Prospector is a very renowned uh, design that a lot of uh, modern uh, manufacturers are still producing that design in one form or another. Uh, Ted Moores has the Prospector um, redrawn uh, with the help of Steve Killing into a beautiful, um, easy to build, traditional uh, touring canoe. The, the Bob Special is a very popular design. It's another chestnut uh, design. And I also now have the Ranger 15 on my website. So the, the Prospector, Bob Special, and Ranger 15, those were all uh, chestnut designs. And then I have a lot of the uh, Freedom designs, Freedom Canoe designs, the Freedom 17. And those are uh, modern asymmetrical uh, touring canoe designs that uh, Steve Killing put together. Another designer I'm really proud to have now in my catalog is John Winters. He really revolutionized uh, modern canoe design with an analytical approach to what makes a good canoe design, a good efficient rough water handling, you know. And John comes to it as a really experienced canoe user doing trips in the Canadian wilderness um, with canoes he's designed um, and with the help of Martin Stepp at Green Valley Boat Works. Martin Stepp is a really talented draftsman and the plans he's produced from John's designs are really top-notch and so again I'm really honored to have those designs the Winisk, uh, Kippewa, and Kite the Winisk is a serious tripping canoe, carry a lot of weight out into remote lakes and open water lakes. So I'm really honored to have the Bear Mountain designs in my catalog. I'll be adding more of those over time. And John Winter's designs with the help of uh, Martin Stepp at Green Valley Boat Works. They're 
they're really quality designs and I'm looking at bringing in some other designs. So if you're looking for some quality canoe designs, I have the designs I did, the Mystic River Tandem and my pack canoes, the Nymphs. Um, the, obviously they're still there, but the addition of these canoes from Bear Mountain Boats and John Winters, I think I really have a great selection of seriously quality canoe designs in my catalog at this point. So I'm really pleased to be able to offer those to you. Also, Bear Mountain Boats has some nice uh, kayak designs that have now been added. The Endeavor um, has a really good touring kayak. And I'll also be adding some of John Winter's kayak designs in the future. So really looking forward to all of those and really pleased to be able to offer what I now have on the catalog already. So you can find links to the Bear Mountain boats and uh, John Winter's designs up here and uh, t check those out. I think you'll really find them interesting and hope hopefully um, get some beautiful boats built from those designs. So that was a long talk. Without further ado, let's get to uh, today's episode. Again, I'm uh, scraping and sanding the interior of the petrol kayak and I'm also working on the combing. So you'll see I made a mistake making the combing this episode and you see how I fixed it and move on. I don't do a whole lot of talking through this. It's a lot of time lapse but um, if you're interested in some detailed discussion of what's going on in this episode check out these episodes in the petrol build um, they cover some of the same thing and I talk in a little bit more detail on what I'm doing so let's get right to it <laughs>
we've got the cockpit roughly trimmed out here. Um, there's a few goobers along the edge, which are just gonna knock those down. And I'm going to uh, start working on the combing. So the combing is going to come through like this. Um, this is a thigh brace. But I, I'm going to end up building the combing in place here. I just need a little guide as to where that's going to go. So I happen to have um, this, which is the cutout from CNC cutting a cockpit from some previous boats. And I'm just going to use that to sort of connect the points here with a scribe. Right. I left a little bit of a line there. Now I need to cut some pieces. I'm going to put in vertical strips here, and these will just end up being glued on the surface there. And that, when it's all glass and so forth, makes an excellent combing riser.
honestly I get for trying to rush it. Um, the glue wasn't dry between the pieces. This is, is fairly fragile here since the uh, pieces of wood are just sort of surface tacked down with the hot melt glue. Um, but uh, it would have survived better if I let the yellow glue dry in between. It's still wet. It's still, it's still actually serving to hold it there while I'm getting that ready. This all gets reinforced with fiberglass and gets a lip on it and it all ends up being very rugged when it's all done. But uh, at this point it's a little bit delicate. I wanted to get some glass on this tonight so I could uh, start cleaning up the inside tomorrow while I'm finishing up the inside of the hull. But uh, one thing at a time.
So I've got a filleting mix here of the same batch of epoxy I used to just do a light wet down of the surface. And then I added some wood flour, a little cavasil, and a little dollop of the same stain I used to stain the boat to give it some color. The alcohol-based stain is compatible with the epoxy. And so now I'm just going to uh, run a bead of this. down into the corner of the uh, recess here because if you remember I uh, glued this together with CA glue before staining it so the CA glues acted as a resist and uh, made it so that the stain did not uh, color that part of the wood so I've got a bright stripe there so I'm just going to bury that under a little bit of the fillet here. It'll be really thin. See how that works out. fillet all the way around that that'll make that really strong so again the soup the hot melt glue I used to glue these parts down to the top surface of the thigh brace here is not strong by itself those are basically clamps to hold in place until I get this epoxy on now with the fillet and there'll be a fillet on the other side when I'm all done that'll be really strong and the combing lip around here will make a really tough kind of the strongest part of the boat so now I'm going to cut some bias strips of cloth and lay that down in there and that will be um, all for the outside.
So that's it for this episode. In the next episode, I will be fiberglassing the interior. I'm not sure how long it'll take me to get out the next episode. I still have a lot of projects to do, but I'm going to make a concerted effort to edit the video. This video I captured over a year ago. Um, it's probably almost two years now, and it's been sit, sort of sitting in the can waiting to get out. But I really appreciate your patience and the people continuing to support me on Patreon. Thank you very much. I, I, I'm i sorry I didn't get videos out more quickly, but um, I've accomplished a lot. The other way to support me is to uh, buy plans. You can check out the new plans from Bear Mountain Boats and John Winters on my website, as well as all the designs I have for kayaks, canoes, and other small boats. The sale of those plans is my primary way of earning a living. And as I record this, we're approaching Christmas, and I have Robo Bevels still for sale. And I made another big batch, and I've got a bunch of those available. So after the holidays, I will be raising the price of my plans and the Robo Bevel. I've sort of analyzed the cost of making the Robo Bevels, and I'm really not charging enough. And the cost of printing my plans has gone up over the years, and it's been a long time since I raised the prices to reflect those costs. Now is a chance to buy those plans at a lower price and save a little bit of money. But they will all still be there after the first of the year, just at a slightly higher price. And I really appreciate your support. And if you enjoy this video and others like it, hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you know when I uh, have the next video ready. Thanks for watching and happy paddling.